All right, well, this is meant to be an installation guide for installing the uh, GTX 480 full cover water block on the GTX 480. And I guess it's a bit of a, a guide for installing a full cover block in general, should you want to do that. Okay, so the first thing is you will need to have all of the necessary things. You'll need a water block, a video card. Please do this with a high-end video card. I've seen people like water cooling GTX 460s. By the time you spend $100 on a water block for that kind of card, you might as well have bought a better one. Um, next, you will need some thermal compound, a Phillips head screwdriver, usually, although with the GTX 580, you'll need a Torx as well. And then you will also need the instructions. Please follow these carefully, read them carefully, all of that good stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the stock cooler. I haven't quite decided if I'm going to do this video in real time or like how real time I'm going to make it. I think I'll have to sort of do the steps and then come back because things like removing screws from the back of a video card are pretty tedious and it's uh, hard enough to just kind of yammer on about random things to fill the empty parts of my videos at the best of times. But I mean, this is just like graphics card cooler installation. There isn't really much to talk about. So uh, yeah, bear with me while I do this. Once you've removed all the screws from the back of the card, make sure you don't forget to do the ones at the end of the PCI bracket uh, before you try to remove the cooler. Okay, so now that the card's apart, what I usually do at this step is uh, take all of the thermal pads off of the card, put them back exactly where they were on the stock cooler, take all of these screws, put them back into the stock cooler, and then put it in a Ziploc bag or wrap it in plastic wrap or something so that that's going to still be there for you if you ever need to take off the water block and uh, put the stock cooler back on, either for warranty purposes or if you don't want to water cool that system anymore or whatever the case may be. For this next step, you'll need something that I forgot to mention. You'll need some 99% isopropyl alcohol and you will need some uh, teepee, or I mean, ideally you'd use a lint-free cloth, but I mean, who has enough of those to throw away? Oh, and this is interesting. It's funny, his timing is uh, awesome, because here's a pro tip for you. I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's actually a hair on the GPU from when I reapplied the thermal compound with the air cooler. It's a multicolored hair, so I'm pretty sure I know where it came from. Cat. Hey. Yeah, you. Pretty sure it came from you. So uh, the next step is you take a little bit of toilet paper, some isopropyl, and you wet it, and then you remove all residue, all everything you can get off of the thermal compound on the GPU, as well as any leftovers of the thermal pads on the memory chips. So you use the wet TP to remove it, and then you should give it another good wipe down with uh, a clean part. You can see that even though it looked clean, there was still quite a bit of residue on there. Find another clean part, go again. You want to make sure you're removing everything because that's going to give you the best uh, interface between the new water block and the stuff that you are trying to cool with it. What I usually do after I've done a good few wipes once the uh, toilet paper starts coming off pretty clean like that, then I usually give it a wipe with a lint-free cloth, which is normally whatever shirt I'm wearing, because I care a lot more about my graphics card than I do about my clothes. And that way you can be sure that you haven't left any little uh, remnants of, of toilet paper fibers on uh, the, any of the surfaces. Uh, yet another thing that I didn't account for us needing, scissors. So now we're going to cut the thermal pads to size so that we can put them all on the correct parts of the PCB. Well, not the PCB, we're going to put them on the RAM, the VRM, uh, not on the GPU. Thermal pads do not go on the GPU. And um, yeah, so I think the only ones we actually have to cut are the RAM ones. You can see EK's instructions are like that. So they show you you cut uh, four per. So the easiest way to cut four is to cut half and then to cut half again. So we're going to do that and that. And then we end up with little thermal pads that are just the right size for a RAM chip. So when you're applying these, please, please, please make sure you remove the plastic covers from both sides, okay? Because if you leave those on, you will be 
probably roasting your RAM. So good luck with that. So I'm going to go ahead and apply all the RAM ones, and then we'll cover the uh, VRMs after that. These are kind of finicky. This is going to take me a little while. It's a lot harder to do this when you're trying to hold the camera at the same time. So there, it's applied just like that. It's been a while since I've installed an EK full cover, but it looks like they've actually uh, really improved the way they do their instructions. So you, they clearly label sort of which pads are which and which ones go where and what they're supposed to cover. So that's, uh, that's pretty outstanding. So I'm going to do the MOSFET ones now, uh, which are uh, this one, this one, and this one, which used to be square, but I cut it down a little bit smaller because the lot, it was like coming out to here at the edge of the card. And the last thing you want is to have it installed and be able to see the other side of the thermal pad just under the block when you look in the side of your case. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but uh, you know I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to this sort of stuff. So that would be that would be an unacceptable result to me, and I would have to take the whole thing apart, which is a real pain, and I don't feel like doing that. So uh, as with anything water cooling, it's way, way better to do it right the first time than to try to correct it later. So there, I've put on that one. Next, I'm going to apply this one and this one. I don't really care if they stick out the bottom because I'll never see those. Actually, I would see those. I'm going to trim these too. So I'll just put those. Well, that was almost really funny in a haha, I guess it's time to buy a new graphics card sort of way. Uh, I made a small mistake. The uh, number three thermal pad is actually a little bit thicker than the number two thermal pad, and I had misread the instructions here. I thought three was supposed to go over this square here, but actually you're supposed to cut it up and put it on these little guys right here. So that is now done. And then I used one of these strips that I figured I was being innovative and trimmed from the bottom of these to put up here. So now everything is covered and I'm in good shape as always with water cooling. And this is why I didn't make the mistake ultimately. Make sure you double check, go through, do a sanity check, make sure that all of your bases are covered. All right, so next we're gonna put the reinforcer and we should please note that the orientation of the reinforcer is important. One of the other key points when installing a GPU water block is making sure you use the right screws for everything. So you can see these ones are short. The ones in the diagram for putting on the spacer, or rather the reinforcer plate, are short. I'm going to use a technique that I call the innovative edge of the table technique. So this allows me to screw something into the back of the card without upsetting all of the thermal pads that I have uh, placed on the top. So I just kind of get my head under it and screw it in from there. Now this next part's a real pain and a total mess uh, if you do it the way that EK recommends. Um, basically they say take some thermal compound, put it on these little washers and then put them in place and hopefully that'll help them stay in place and then take the card and position it over top. Uh, personally, I okay, if I wasn't doing a guide for you guys and doing things by the book, I would never use the washers. Uh, the reason they exist is because uh, certain people couldn't handle not over tightening their full cover water blocks. And uh, here, hold on, I'm gonna orient this this way so that the uh, PCI back plate is gonna hang over the edge of the table so I can put it down cleanly. Make sure that I don't move those washers. Actually, I better do this off camera. This is gonna be tricky. But anyway, people couldn't handle not over tightening their water blocks. So um, everyone started implementing standoffs in one, in, one way or another, and uh, basically if you don't over tighten it, it's not necessary, but since the manufacturer does recommend it, I am recommending that you go ahead and use them. Although I personally am not gonna cover them in thermal compound because that's a mess that I don't feel like cleaning up if I ever have to remove it. Thermal compound application is one of those hotly debated topics. I'll be using IC Diamond thermal compound, okay? And because this is such a large heat spreader, I will be using a large amount of compound. And I'm going to go ahead and use the X technique. So when you've got a big surface to cover, the grain of rice sometimes doesn't really cut it. Oh, I forgot how thick this stuff is. It's hard to apply through a camera compared to when you're not trying to apply through a camera. There we go. So and then I'm going to go where I was before. And uh, take them out this way, come on. Okay, I would recommend 
using, well, part of the problem is the room's quite so cold. You know what, I'm just going to show you guys the end result. Well, that's quite possibly the worst job of applying thermal paste ever, but the most important thing is that we've got really good coverage in the center and that it's got somewhere to spread out from so that uh, the actual dye itself is going to be cooled. So, yeah, do as I say, not as I do. That's terrible. Maybe use the line technique if you're in a cold room with uh, icy diamond because this stuff is thick when it's cold. So I've carefully lowered it down exactly where it goes. Um, since I'm not using the thermal grease technique to hold them in place, uh, a lot of them shift a little bit, so all I have to do is take a screwdriver and make sure that I realign the, uh, the washer before I try to put the screw in, which I've already done. Okay, so now what I've done is I've gone ahead and put in all of the screws into the back of the graphics card. Now I've put them all in very, very gently. That is to say that they are, they're not finger tight, they're not any kind of tight. I've put them in far enough that the screw touches the PCB, but there is no tightening going on right now. So, um, here, hold on, I'm going to do the last one. Uh, these two, where there's the weird hole for the fan in the PCB, I'm supposed to use these uh, plastic washers, apparently. So I've gone ahead and done that. So I'm just going to put that in there. Uh, that is because there isn't a proper uh, screw hole for those ones. So I actually tightened that too much, probably. So yeah, you can see these are quite loose. They're barely in there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go around and I'm going to tighten them all. Watch, I'm using two fingers. Okay, I'm not going to overdo it. I'm going to tighten them about that much. That's all you need. You need contact. You're not trying to mash the PCB into the block. This is not like a CPU block where a ton of mounting pressure is going to make some kind of difference in performance. So you just want to give them all a nice little turn. There we go. Oops, I hope I didn't miss any. There. And always double check. So once we've double checked to ensure that we have all of the screws installed in the back of the video card, it is highly recommended that you actually remove them all, take the whole thing apart, and then check for contact between the GPU and the block. So that means uh, if, the, if the thermal pads are all still stuck to the block, then you want to check all of the RAM chips and all of the MOSFETs to see if they have a little bit of uh, greasiness looking to them, uh, if they're a little bit greasy looking, because that means they were making contact. And same for the GPU core. You want to make sure that it's nice and well spread out on the block itself so that uh, you can be sure that everything is going to be cooled. Because remember, you can check the temperatures of the GPU, but you can't check the temperatures of all this other stuff once you've got it installed in your system. So you gotta be sure that they're going to be cooled. Last thing is fittings. Uh, for this, you will need, uh, well, fittings. So I'm gonna be salvaging the older style of stop fittings because I really don't like the, uh, the look of the new ones. I find this much more aesthetically appealing. So I'll be grabbing these from an old uh, EK full cover 8800 block that I had lying around. And I'm also going to grab a couple 3 8 compression fittings that are compatible with my water cooling system. So um, basically when you're installing fittings, you want to make sure A, your O-rings are in the proper position, and B, that they are tight. Most fittings these days have a recessed O-ring, which means you can't over-tighten them, so feel free to crank on them. The technique I used to install these, which is going to make them impossible to remove by hand, was I actually uh, wrap the grip here in a cloth, and then I use a pair of vice grips to tighten them down, so those are not coming off unless I go get my vice grips now. So now I'm done. The blocks... Uh sexiness factor has increased the card's sexiness factor by many times, in my opinion. And uh, the installation procedure is complete as far as I'm concerned, although some people would go further and buy additional back plates or buy uh, replacement uh, I.O. plates that are only single slot so that they can actually install uh, cards in the slot next to the graphics card because this is now a single slot. GTX 480, see? All right, so all that's left now is to install it in my system. So I'll just take that apart and it's gonna go in there where the graphics card is right now. Thank you for checking it out and don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, guides, and whatever I